And I'm Paul Guggenheimer. KGB News Time is now one thirty-two. Well, you may have heard us asking the question today as part of our KQVTribLive.com listener poll. The Pennsylvania House passed a bill allowing the appointment of poll watchers from outside an election district. Every Democrat opposed the bill, along with 13 Republicans, mostly from southeastern Pennsylvania around Philadelphia, where candidate Trump warned supporters to watch for possible voter fraud last November. The sponsor, Republican State Representative Rick Saccone of of Allegheny County, heard us asking the question today and agreed to join us on the KQV Live line and is with us now. Representative Saccone, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure to be on your show. So uh, you have called this a good government measure, but why do we need this? Do we know that there was, in fact, voter fraud in Pennsylvania during last year's election? Well, I think the short answer to that is yes, we do know that. But regardless of it, both sides of this issue should want this bill. If you believe there's voter fraud in Pennsylvania, you should want poll watchers there to watch and make sure that the rules are being followed. If you think this is all a figment of the conspiracy's imagination and there is no voter fraud in Pennsylvania, you should want poll watchers there to confirm that. This is, it, it, both sides should be for this. This is not a partisan issue. This is just good government to have people there monitoring the system and uh, observing and reporting if they see any irregularities. And the voting fraud I- I- that you say is happening is happening in what form exactly? You know, there. Are, you know, as I've been, uh, I've been a poll watcher myself for the last eight years. And I've I've uh, documented about seven different kinds of what I would call that fit in the category of voter fraud, and that poll watchers can help out with. It could be something as as simple as you walk into a polling place and someone has. You're uh, one of the uh, campaign posters of, of one of the opponents up in the polling place. Obviously, that's illegal. I've actually had, had had to ask people to take it down, and I've argued with judges of elections to say, you know, whether or not they could do that. So poll watchers can come in and say, look, uh, you know, this isn't right. Can we can we fix this? And then we can get it done now, on the spot. And it usually takes just a few minutes, and you can get those things done. All the way up to you know people coming in and and uh, pushing the buttons for other voters who. Uh, who might be confused about who to vote for, and as poll watchers can be there to see that, that those kinds of things aren't happening. Uh, you're, and, you're, uh, and you're saying that that's not happening already? I'm saying there are poll watchers out there, but they're, it's hard to get. Remember, these are all volunteers. These are not paid people. It's hard to get poll watchers in every poll, especially when you're from uh, different parts where uh, different parts of the state where uh, you may not have uh, a lot of uh, Republican or Democrat uh uh, voters in that area, in that precinct. And in places like my county, where I straddle two counties, Washington and Allegheny, imagine the ridiculousness of the fact that uh, I can't have my wife watch a poll for me across the border, one mile across the border into Washington County because she's from Allegheny County, even though I'm running in both of those counties' districts. So, uh, And many of our races are statewide, so everybody in Pennsylvania has a vested interest in that. So it's just good government to say we should have poll watchers be allowed to come from anywhere in the state, remember they're invited by the candidate. They can't. We're, we we can't have itinerant poll watchers roaming around the state by the bus loads because that's one of the arguments from from the opposition. They're invited by the candidate. You, each candidate gets two poll watchers, and only one of them can be inside at any one time. So um, yeah, these are people that are invited by you. So uh, it's not uh, bands of roaming people coming around making mischief. That's the other thing. And remember, poll watchers cannot interact with the public. They can observe and report and report any irregularities to the judge of elections. So they're not making mischief or they'll be thrown out. So those are some of the misperceptions that are out there. This will help to, to uh, clarify and ensure that our, every vote counts and that uh, the rules are being followed in all of our polling places across the state. How do you ensure, though? I, I'm sure there are plenty of people out there who are concerned as they hear this that there, this, this could potentially, possibly cause voter suppression the way critics of voter ID, for example, say it would have in, in 2012. So how do you guard against that? There, I don't see any way it would cause voter suppression. It doesn't change the rules of how many poll uh, watchers can be in there uh, at all, so that, that we can have this, there will be the same amount of poll watchers authorized that are authorized currently under the law. This only says that uh, if, you, if, if you're having a hard time finding volunteers, and you know how hard it is to find volunteers these days, uh, you, they can come from outside the actual district where they live in. It's very simple. It doesn't really change uh, the, the, the the dynamic of how many poll watchers are uh, that are currently authorized to be in there. But many of those, place, those spots go unfilled right now because it's, it is hard to find volunteers. We've been talking with Republican State Representative Rick Saccone of Allegheny County. One last question before we let you go. You have mm-hmm. filed to run 
for the U.S. Senate, hoping to get a chance eventually to unseat incumbent U.S. Senator Bob Casey. A cynic might say that your motivation here is to gain the favor of President Trump, which could potentially help your bid. How would you answer that? My motivation to run for the Senate comes from looking at Bob Casey's record and seeing that he doesn't represent the, the uh, people of Pennsylvania. He hasn't for a number of years now. I will represent the people of Pennsylvania much better. And uh, and also it's time that we just get some new blood in there, get someone that will stand up for, for us and for for our agenda. And it's time to put a veteran in the United States Senate from Pennsylvania. Right. And the only veteran that's running. Well, let me jump in. We, we know that we know why you're running, but the, but the question here is, is, is why should a cynic – not believe that you know part of your motivation for this particular uh, House bill was to uh, maybe impress the president. I put this bill in in January 2015, two years ago, before any anything about running for the Senate or or whether or Donald Trump was in office yet. So uh, it, had, it had nothing to do with that at all. This bill is two years old. It's taken us that much of a fight to get it this far. And uh, it, it, it just amazes me that we would even have this much pushback on such a good government bill that the people want overwhelmingly. I think your poll shows it. You see those polls around the state. Everywhere I go and talk to people, they know this is a good government bill. They want it. And yet we have a whole party, the Democrat Party, voting against it because the unions are against it. And we have uh, people that are trying to undermine that right now as we speak. Again, going against the will of the people. I am representing the will of the people on this, and your poll will verify that. All right. Well, Representative Republican State Representative Rick Saccone of Allegheny County joining us on the KQV Live Line. Sir, thanks for your time. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me on.